When one has a calling, a vision, a purpose, a passion, to share something important with the world, it's not an option to ignore that calling. I'm Ernesto Delgado. I was born in uh, Zamora, Michoacan, Mexico. I uh, grew up in Napa, California, and have been a Sacramento resident for almost 30 years, a proud resident. Growing up in Napa truly shaped me, truly shaped who I am. Growing up with my family showed me my culture. It really became my true schooling of life. And I believe that's truly why I love my culture and why it's a passion. Because in Mexican culture, it's all about family. It's all about gathering and celebrating. Yeah, and it's all about hospitality. Truly my mother, Elvira Delgado, she was a true host. She welcomed everyone into her home. Regardless of the day of the week, there was always family coming over, day and night. My mom would always cook for everyone. You walk in the door and right away she was offering you something to drink. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Uh, she just loved making people happy. And I believe that's truly how I became who I am. A restaurateur, an expert in hospitality uh, is really where I come to life. It was during college and after college where I do recall where I realized after working in, in many restaurants throughout my life, I wanted to open my own restaurant. I wanted to be a restaurateur. It's been a passion since I, I can remember. My well was a way to express my passions. The inspiration was truly to exhibit my culture, to exhibit my passions, to exhibit what I love personally, and I want to show it to the world. It's a concept that I realized that it was going to be a restaurant with a museum concept, because that's how I could exhibit my culture, from the food on a plate, the beverage or spirit in, in a glass, beautiful artwork, our celebrations, our holidays, just everything that our culture has to offer. I realized that it's so beautiful that my concept was to exhibit it in a museum environment. And that's when I came up with the idea of calling it Tequila Museo Mayahuel a museum of Mexico showcased through the history and production of tequila. One of my quotes that I love is, you see seeds, but I see trees. I love taking something that is abandoned and turning it into something beautiful. And I think that's what I did here at Maya Well, because when people walked into this space, they, could not, they, they couldn't imagine that this beautiful restaurant or museum is in this space. And I see it all the time in people's faces as they walk in. They open the door and they go, wow. As you walk in, it's almost like a breath of fresh air that just come, consumes you. Uh, the music, the candlelight, the ambiance, the customer service, you know, and it's just truly the environment. I like to say it's not only our job to care for our guests, it's also our goal to amaze them. And that's truly what makes Maya Wall exceptional. Mesa Mercado 
um, is a concept that was kind of, the idea there was to really exhibit my mother's kitchen. I always like to remember and, and state her name, Elvira Delgado, because she's truly what gave me my love for food and culture, um, for the kitchen, for, for being a host. And uh, when I was coming up with the little tagline for Mesa Mercado, I came up with the idea that it said, a religious food experience, because that made me think of my mother. And originally it was in Spanish, because I was trying to think of what, you know, how my mother used to make me feel in her kitchen. And what came to mind was una experiencia religiosa, because she was always about the Virgin Mary, she was always about just making people happy, you know, and she always had the votive candle, so that's part of the concept. It's like a religious experience because it's what, what gives your mind, body, and soul the nutrients or nutrition that it makes your mind sound, it makes your heart sound, it makes your overall just healthy, you know, so when I came up with Mesa Mercado concept, it was all about a Mexican restaurant that truly was all about the origination of Mexican food. So that went back to the moles, you know, the chile nogada, truly the dishes that define Mexican food. And here in America, you know, we define me Mexican food as burritos and chips and salsa, but that's truly not Mexican food, you know? The origination of the Mexican cuisine goes back to the ancient times where they were making these pastes like mole, a dish like chile nogada that defines the country, that represents the identity of the country. It's a chile relleno that was the first, a roasted poblano pepper that's roasted over the open fire, cleaned on the inside and peeled to really get the essence of the pepper, the meat of the pepper, as I like to say it. After it's been marinating in the fire and smoke, that's truly where the, that flavor comes out and it is by marinating it with the smoke and the fire. And that's, that's how I see the Aztecs, right? That's how they came up originally with these simple methods of cooking. So you take the roasted poblano pepper, peel it, clean the insides, stuff it with what's called a picadillo, which is a mixture of pork and beef, raisins, walnuts, almonds, and then you top it off with a, a white walnut sauce that makes it beautiful. Then top it off with seasonal pomegranates. So now you got the green, the white, and the red to represent Mexico and the flag of Mexico. That's what I, like, I love to do in my restaurants is really truly educate people on Mexico. And I love to say the word Mexico, not Mexican, but Mexico, because I'm truly about representing true Mexico and what that means, the true food of our people and where I come from. La Cosecha is a Mexican restaurant with Sacramento culture. The idea started actually in Guadalajara, <laughs> Guadalajara, Mexico. Uh, it's kind of fun to say it that way, but I remember being on a bench in a plaza in Guadalajara, in a place called Tlaquepaque, and I had my sister on the left, my niece on the right, and I remember a young man came up to our bench and offered us tacos. <laughs> and he said, uh, gustan tacos? And I, you know, we all kind of looked at him. And in my mind, I kind of thought he was a little crazy. I'm like, well, where are you going to get them? You know, what are they in your backpack or your pocket? And he kind of smirked a little bit and he pointed and I said, no, look over there. That, that's my taco cart. So I look at my, si my, my sister and my niece, and I said, 
quieren tacos? And uh, they said, yes. I said, okay. I said, okay, we'll be right over. In Spanish, of course. And the young man says, no, I'll be right back. It, it was just kind of funny he said that, right? I'll be right back. <laughs> so the guy runs over to his taco cart, comes back, and he ran back with a little table, a little tablecloth, which was more of a napkin type of thing, and some menus. So the guy unfolds a little table, puts the little napkin tablecloth on the, on the table, and hands us all menus and says, you know, what would you like to drink? We have uh, jarritos, aguas frescas, starts naming sangria and all these things. And uh, we all order our, our drink of choice. Then he offers us tacos, I believe he said tamales, uh, esquite, and all this street food options. And in my mind, as a restaurateur, I was blown away. I thought, wow, this man realized that this whole plaza is his dining room. So obviously he must pay a small fee to have his little taco car in the plaza. Yet he was intelligent enough to know that he doesn't have to have a restaurant. The whole dining, the whole plaza, the whole, it's, it's his dining room. So when I came across this opportunity at Cesar Chavez Plaza, I realized and my mind instantly took me to that bench and thought, wow, this is that opportunity that I saw in Guadalajara on that plaza bench that said, I can have my little restaurant here, but the whole plaza is my dining room. And that's truly kind of how that idea came about. I believe that this is my purpose. This is what I'm supposed to do in life. Outside of taking care of my family for my professional life, this is what I love to do. I love creating, building. I always say that my three passions are one, design and architecture. Two is my culture. Three is my drive for entrepreneurialism or creating and building, which kind of falls along the same line. So I realized that in a restaurant environment, I can actually exercise kind of all three of my passions. And truly, that's why I believe my restaurants are unique and I am a unique restaurateur. My life's passion is to share my culture through my restaurants with the goal of becoming a leading Sacramento restaurateur. Success in business enables me to fulfill and deliver the cultural experience to the highest degree not only caring for our guests, but truly amazing them. I've been coming here for maybe four months now, and I really enjoy it because we get to learn about the different tequila, and now mezcal. It's very educational, and it always makes us feel like family. So I enjoy it very much. I motivate myself every day, every day. I love audiobooks. I love quotes. I inspire myself so much that anytime I have a challenge, this quote just comes to me. For example, if I have a challenge and uh, a, a quote will come to me from a book I read, from a motivational speaker I heard um, one must sacrifice who you are today to become who you want to be tomorrow or when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe then you'll be successful so it's it's interesting how my mind works because there's always challenges but it seems that
that I always have these ideas, these, these solutions, these quotes that deliver a solution in my mind and I just execute that thought and solve. I move on to the next. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful because every day there's challenges and you just got to get through them. You got to find a way, you got to seek a way. I apply it to, to everything, even on the floor or in the, in the dining experience, but I apply it to everything. You must seek, you must ask, you must seek and you shall find type of thing. It's, it's a challenge. When one has a calling, a vision, a purpose, a passion, to share something important with the world, it's not an option to ignore that calling.